Okay, hey guys, this is Chris with the Hot Tub Cowboy YouTube channel. So what I wanna show you real quick, we have a beautiful Hot Springs Prodigy IQ 2020 board. Um, we made these spas from early 2000s, uh, actually early 2000s into about 2008. And so you can tell it's an IQ 2020 uh, real quick because on the control pack it actually says IQ 2020. But what we're talking about with IQ 2020 is this control unit this control pack. So very common issue on these spas is the legendary uh, blinking red and green lights. So in this situation, this spa is at our shop. We've already blocked this spa up. Um, we have tested it out. We know that it's the pressure switch. So I'm gonna show you guys a really easy way. First off in another video, we'll show you how to test and identify that it is the pressure switch. I'm sorry, uh, pressure switch in this case, flow switch in other cases, um, but we're going to show you a really easy way to fix the pressure switch without having to replace the heater, without having to jump anything on the board. And so we actually do this for all our hot springs tubs. Uh, reason being is because uh, it's gonna be a lot cheaper and faster to fix it this way. Same methodology that hot springs would use versus um, having to replace your heater. So in other words, what I'm getting at is you have a pressure switch that's built into these heaters on the back of these spas. Your pressure switch is gonna regulate flow. Flow is gonna come in from the filter housing, start pump pulls it in from the filter housing, pushes it in right here through the heater, pushes it back out into your hot tub hot. This pressure switch, let me go ahead and cut this. Is it tight? This pressure switch, which is this wire right here, is going to, when there's water going through it, it's going to close. And when it closes, it's gonna tell your heater to turn on, it's safety. If there's not enough water going through this ball, that pressure switch isn't going to close. It's not going to allow your heater to turn on. You're going to get a flashing red and green light. If your pressure switch goes bad, sometimes they can calcify. It can stay open even if there is proper water going through it, right? And so now if you call the wrong tech out there, they might say, well, you need a new heater. They want to charge you an arm and a leg. We've seen instances where people want to be charged $1,000 to replace these heaters just because of a little pressure switch. Um, so one of the things we do without having to pull the heater, the spa is drained. This is a very easy fix. This is actually a, uh, you know, this is an aftermarket. I believe this is a waterway part, but it's a Sundance Jacuzzi flow switch, okay? So what the flow switch does, it does the exact same thing as a pressure switch. It's on the back side of the heater, and you're going to see this little magnetic dinger, if I can get this close. So when water pushes through that, it's going to close the magnetic dinger, send a signal to the heater that water is flowing through it, turn your heater back on, you're gonna have a nice solid red light. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, real quick, hopefully you guys can see, we just opened this spa up, we just got this. There's an ozone unit. This will be a video for another day. A lot of times we remove these ozone units. On a recirculating system, they last about eight months, give or take. I've seen them go in less than that. I've seen them stay for active for as long as a year. Uh, but we end up removing them anyways. The filtration on these spas is so dang good. When these go bad, as you can see, your little brittle plastic, they can leak. I've seen them throw your breakers. We've had people call us out there and uh, you can actually, uh, it'll it'll turn your entire spa off because of the breaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the mother door, motherboard door. And what we're gonna do here is we are gonna find our pressure switch on the board, right? And if you look up above this plug right here, powers off, it actually says pressure switch, okay? So we're gonna remove that to the side. Now the other thing I wanna do to be able to get to that backside of the heater, there are two screws here. I'm gonna remove these screws. One and two. And then, Grab a flathead real quick. See if we can loosen this up just a little bit. Oh, no, we got it. Okay, perfect. Those are a little tricky to get out sometimes. Okay, so what I'm going to be looking for, this little mozzie injector in the background, this is actually putting your ozone into the spa. Now, there's other ways to do this. If you wanted to leave your ozone, you could just leave this, cut this piece of plumbing, put it in right here. No big deal. Uh, what I'm going to do, we've already gone to Home Depot, we've gotten our three-quarter inch 
one OD three quarter inch ID interdimension plumbing. And we're gonna replace this entire piece of plumbing here. Very, very simple to do. I'm gonna pull that out for you. A couple tools you'll want, channel locks. You're gonna want some wire splicers, some you know conduit cutters, some plumbing cutters, and then some crimpers, okay? And so uh, other valuable tool is gonna be a heater gun. If you don't have a heater gun, an industrial heater gun, you can actually use uh, a blow dryer too, okay? You just gotta be a little careful. Another thing I wanna point out real quick, these little bleeder nipples right here that come off the surf pump are very fragile. So if you can remove, remove this piece of plumbing, just to be careful so you don't bump it, that's a good idea too. Uh, if you do bump it, it's not the end of the world. I'll do another video eventually showing you how to fix that. But we wanna remove this piece of plumbing right here. <clears throat> you see how close I am? Do that thing, okay. Perfect, so I got my channel, my channel locks. I've used that for the pipe clamps. Those are off there and there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heater gun on. Is a little tight to work back here okay we're just going to use this heater gun on this piece of plumbing when the plumbing is hot we don't want it to be scorching hot it's really pliable when it's not hot and it's cold it can be very hard to work with so if you can see this on the video i'm trying to squeeze this can't squeeze that this little portion i heated up very squeezable okay so same thing back here gonna heat this end up right here Hopefully that's enough for us to actually pop this off. Let's see. Twist this off. Okay. This is ozone plumbing. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Since we got rid of our ozone, it's actually not gonna do us any good. All right. So now we have that removed. So our next step here we're going to take our plumbing and now we have a perfect length of how long this needs to be so I can actually hold this up here just like so make sure I'm getting here getting all this in right and give myself a rough measurement of what we're looking at okay Cut it a little bit longer here just in case. If I need to trim it up, I can. Perfect. Go ahead and fit that in there, make sure that works. There's that. All right, that's gonna go there and there. Perfect, yep. And so I can trim this up just a little bit. You can measure it out if you like. I've done this probably 400 times this year. So I don't need to, I don't think. I wanna use these same pipe clamps. So I'm gonna remove these pipe clamps that were on here. Okay. And then I got an iPhone quality video here. So hopefully uh, if you guys like my repairs, we'll get better video service here too. So I'm gonna turn this heater gun back on so I can work with this a little bit better. Very important, okay? So the way this system works, this is going directly to the filter housing. Water is pulling here from the circ pump. This is our pulling side. This is our pushing side. It's pushing it through the double barrel titanium alloy heater, okay? Water flow is gonna go through this front portion of the heater, back through the back side of the heater, come back out this outlet we just removed and go right back into this spot hot. So very important, you'll see an arrow on this, 
but that magnetic dinger has to be able to, if water flows, has to be able to connect right there, okay? If you install it backwards, it's gonna push it further off. You're gonna get your red and uh, green blinking light and it's not gonna do what you want it to do. Okay. So if I were to just roughly here, I'll tell you what we'll do. Go ahead and take care of this side real quick. So that way, we can be out of the angle of that nipple. Okay. And verify here that we reach. We got a perfect reach right there going on. So that's really good for us. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and cut into a position that's nice and open for us. So somewhere like right here, you can actually fit this on. I work a little faster, but if you wanted to, you guys can take a Sharpie and easily mark it up right where you want it to be. Take another pipe clamp here. We're going to stick it on here. Okay, twist it up, make it easier for us. Get that out of the way. Take our heater gun. We're going to keep this in nice and open, nice and flexible. This is going in. Okay, just like that. Nice and snug three-quarter inch plumbing and then there's that okay boom so the next part same thing here we're going to take a pipe clamp see if we can fit this on Now I gotta resize this up again because I added the flow switch. I can make a nice clean cut here because it's wide and open. Okay. Perfect, just like so, okay. Last pipe clamp here. We're gonna go ahead and put this on. Heat it up a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna work that, work that on there. Let's see if we can work this in just a little bit better. Perfect. Okay. Go ahead and turn this off. And so the reason why I'm showing you guys this video is, first off, there's a lot of crooked techs out there, right? And so I have seen people, they've sold me their spas. There's been service calls where we go out and they go, yeah, you know, I just can't afford the $1,200, $800 repair to replace the heater. When in fact, you don't have to replace the heater at all. Um, in some situations, you can actually replace the pressure switch behind the heater. But quite honestly, they fail. They're kind of a pain to replace. In my opinion, this is a much better way. And the good thing about this too, is if this fails, this part is around $50, $60. It's a pretty inexpensive part. You can see pretty inexpensive part, pretty time efficient repair. And I'm gonna see here. Okay, the other good thing about this is because this is clear, if you do get that red and green blinking light, you should actually be able to see water flowing through here, right? Red and blink, green blinking light is gonna indicate there's a flow issue. So if it's not your pressure switch, again, this will be a video for another time. 
uh, but it could be your circulation pump. If your shirt pump is failed, then of course it's not gonna be moving water through your heater. It could be a number of other things. It could be something as simple as a clog filter. But for this video, we're just showing you how to uh, improve on, in my opinion, a pressure switch. If you do, in fact, know it's a pressure switch. Okay, so we are almost done here. What I'm gonna do, we're gonna slip this back behind the motherboard. I'm gonna put the motherboard back on. We're gonna crimp this together with some sleeves, taped it up, and we're done. Okay, so there's that. Okay guys, we are back. So sometime these, because the plumbing is settled, it'll be a little bit tricky to get back in, but we got it back in there nice and tight. Um, had to remove my ground, so we'll go ahead and put this ground back. Okay. And I'm gonna show you the final step to this to give you a nice home run here, okay? <clears throat> so these will come with plugs, just like that little metal plugs for the uh, Sundance board. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna cut those off. We can strip this wire back. So we have some nice pretty copper. Okay. Same thing here. Take a couple of blue electrical sleeves. You can get these at Home Depot, very cheap. Okay, we're gonna slip one on like so. We're gonna crimp it down nice and tight. Boom. Crimp our other side down nice and tight. That one wasn't tight, so we got to do another one real quick. Nice and tight. There's that. We're going to take our pressure switch plug, uh, and it's not a bad idea to cut this back. You can cut it back as far as you want. Right, we're gonna cut ours back here for now. I can show you guys. Okay, same thing here. We're gonna pull this gray sheathing off. Cool, now we got our red and our black here. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna tie these back in. Okay, I'm gonna grab our crimpers. I'll put them right there. that down nice and tight same thing here with our red okay and now we are good to go we're gonna put our pressure switch back on okay and then what I'm gonna do, we're gonna fill it up. I'm gonna get you guys another video on the return side of everything working good so you guys can see what it actually looks like with water flowing through it and everything working good, okay? And we will of course tape that up. We'll zip tie it all back up right now too. I like to uh, of course test it all out, make sure everything is good and connected before we do the tape. Um, and then lastly, what I'm gonna do here, we're gonna find our ozone, right? our ozone wire, and it should be labeled ozone as well on the board. We are going to pull that out because that is just sitting here now. Okay. And then we just take a plug here, plug there, boom. And that is out of there, okay? 
We'll get her filled up for you guys and we'll show you what it looks like on the return side, okay?